Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Thank we, you for having me. It's good to see you this morning. So we, we ran a lot of sound there with the mayor because that was the first time we'd heard from him. Certainly had a lot to say. What is your reaction to what he said? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm amazed that he had anything to finally say, but I'm also grateful that he said something. I am unapologetic for my call to request the mayor to resign. I do believe that this is a role that is too big for him. I believe that he has been derelict in his duty because he was a city councilor before he became mayor. He had already assumed several months ahead of two months ago the roles and responsibilities of the mayor of the city of Brooks, Brookside due to the illness of the now deceased mayor, Mayor McCondishie. He has sat on that council where he has approved these budgets year in and year out. He saw the increase of revenues that came as a result of these illegal stops, searches, and seizures, and the rest, and almost a 640% increase. He was already on the job, whether he was there as a mayor or whether he was there as a city council person. He did not fire the, the chief of police. The chief of police resigned. And had he not resigned and had the story not become so great, he would not have fired the city chief of police. So there is nothing that he can say to me that can validate and that warrants him remaining in, in this position without at least getting rid of the city prosecutor who is on the contract and who is also the one of the attorneys for the Waterworks Board here in Birmingham, as well as Judge Wooten. It's just the look of it all it, it smells bad, and it looks bad, <laughs> and it's his role and responsibility to do mm -hmm. Representative Devan, we've heard from uh, a lot of people who now, and we've actually interviewed a few who uh, have talked about how they were treated by the Brookside Police Department in certain instances. Uh, what about stories that you've heard, your office has heard since uh, this has come to light? Uh, these stories have been coming in time and time again. We've tried to get information. We've tried to get uh, some type of clarity as to why the city of Brookside A would move the jurisdictional boundary signs that are in place under law that creates the division line between city to city, municipality to municipality, as well as unincorporated areas. That is my role as a legislator who represents that area to create or assist municipalities in creating laws to annex them into certain areas. That was never done. I am very disturbed by the stories. But the greater story in this also is what has happened or why is it that one trucking company in a municipality as, far, as small as Brookside has impounded over 500 vehicles when you take a size a, a city of, as, a, as the size of Uber who barely does 100 impoundments a year. Mm -hmm. These are people who are black and brown people, mm -hmm. Hispanics, people, women, with children in their vehicles being stripped away from their vehicles, mm, mm, their cars mm. are being impounded, someone either having to come and get their children for simple violations. It's ludicrous, the things that these people have done. This is not just about, this is about some degree of supremacy. This is about a city who has created laws for themselves, and it is unacceptable. Individual citizens' civil rights have been violated. This story is now on the national media circuit. It's an embarrassment and it's a black eye to the citizens, but most of all to the state of Alabama. All right, one thing I want you to, to tell us when you first started hearing about this, the other, while you were talking, we were running some of the video and we saw of the sign uh, saying Brookside jurisdiction and we ran some sound earlier or yesterday uh, with the sheriff here in Jefferson County saying that is not their jurisdiction and he couldn't figure out why they or how they put mm -hmm. that sign up. Talk about that for a moment, what you know. They, the, the, and that's the point that I'm making. That mayor, this, this mayor that I'm speaking of, who would call the lieutenant governor to talk to the lieutenant governor, but he won't call me as a legislator over 12 years in that area or, it, or within the boundary areas of Farsdale, mm -hmm. Brookside, <clears throat> Adamsville, and a portion of Fultondale. But the thing about it, you took us, you allowed a sign to remain in place where you knew that you have seen in the course of the past two months that is not within the city of Brookside city limits. <laughs> you allowed this to happen. 
So my whole thing is, if these people are bold enough to create their own city jurisdictional lines, it's no telling what else they have not been doing. I want a full investigation from the Department of Justice. I want Steve Marshall to step up to the plate, for which I do believe that he is doing something. He's not this silent for no reason. And I understand sometimes with law enforcement, they handle cases like this a little bit differently. I do want to believe that he is going to be a wise steward of the people's trust as the, the chief law enforcement officer of this state. But I want the Department of Justice to step in. I want our legislative office, uh, mm -hmm. me as a legislator, and my colleagues to join me. Because these people took the laws within their own hands to say they had no respect for the legislature. They had no respect for their, their fellow citizens in their district, within their jurisdictional districts. Nor did they have respect for the other mayors in all of the other municipalities and unincorporated areas around them. Much of the money that they have been receiving probably should have been going to the county coffers and to the county fund, not to the city of Brookside. That's theft. Right. That's fraud and that's, it's theft by deception. All right, one more mm -hmm. I do want to get to this before we wrap up. You and the sheriff are holding a meeting on Tuesday. Is that correct? And you expect, you expect people to come forward, more people? I, I, I'm going to hold a town hall meeting. I'm going to also try to do it virtually. I've had some calls from folks who said, Ms. Gavan, Representative Gavan, please put it on Facebook Live. Please do something virtual We because we want to be there. But I, I, it will be Tuesday, February 1st, 6 o'clock at the new Jefferson County Sheriff's Training Center. Now, it, and many people have asked, is that in Brookside? Because they're afraid to go to Brookside. It is not. It is off Coburn Road, <coughs> and it is at 3500 Happy Valley Lane. And, but it says Fultondale, but you know how those lines are a little bit, you know, blurry. But the bottom line, Fultondale, 35068. I need you all to show up. Many of you are calling me. My phone cannot continue to take as many calls I'm, as that I'm getting. See, bring your paperwork, bring your complaints. And one last thing, Janice, if I may add, that I'm asking. I'm asking that the city of Brookside, in light of this, will not hold municipal court next week. I would ask them to give a stay on any hearings or any proceedings legally with regards to the court system there until we can begin to discuss this issue a little bit further and get a better handle on this, if they mean to be good and wise <coughs> stewards of the trust of, that the people have given them. State Representative Wanda, Wanda Lincoln. Good the job. District is, uh, Brookside is in her district. Uh, Wanda, good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, the other big story to following, the weather. How